Flash flood warnings continue in southwestern Minnesota tonight. This was the scene from Sky 11 a couple of hours ago with drivers stranded by flooding near Walnut Grove and Redwood County. Other roadway sections have also washed away. Emergency managers in Murray County say the flooding was triggered by at least eight inches of rain in a short period of time this morning. We've seen flooding reports in several southwestern Minnesota communities. CARE 11's Danny Spiewak has more from Murray County tonight. As we were driving into Murray County here in southwestern Minnesota, we saw pools of water everywhere and farmland over roads. And this is sort of what we're looking at all across the county and all across the region with inches and inches of standing water all over the place. This is normally a cornfield and this is normally a paved roadway. Not anymore, not after this morning. It rains and rains and rains. It just started raining and it rained and it rains. And then we get one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inches. Three o'clock in the morning I got up and poured five inches of rain out of my rain gauge. Larry Henderson is trying to cross the lake to get back home on Lake Chautauqua. But we got her pretty good. This is I've been here 30 years. This is the worst I've ever seen it. Lucky for him, law enforcement kept the road open for his truck to get through. But a few miles away in the small community of Curry, major roads remain closed to all traffic for hours. It's a 500 year flood. Mike Rupert owns the oil company and gas station in town. And we have the big lake resort area around here, so everybody's trying to save their cabins and get their stuff. So it's a big free for all and everybody helps everybody. So Murray County's communications team says there were no mandatory evacuations. Some people did leave on their own and a Bible camp with at least 60 kids had to bust them to safety with rising waters. Literally, they're on an island now. And normally we have a roadway to get there, but it's underwater. So that's kind of our main thing. We're told the kids are safe and there are no reports of injuries at all associated with any of the floods. Emergency management teams and law enforcement officials have been monitoring the conditions here to see when they can reopen some roads. They did earlier in the day, but they will just continue to watch it pretty much tonight as they can figure out when they can safely reopen these roads to the public. A teenager driving to work learned just how devastating heavy rain can be. His car fell headfirst into this hole and he had to find a way out. Today's torrential downpours are made for tough and scary driving here in Redwood Falls. From flash flooding in the streets to flooded and washed out roads, almost six and a half inches fell, giving 16 year old Jackson Lang quite the scare on his way to work. I seen the hole probably 30 yards. I only didn't have that much time, but it didn't look very big because I was pretty low in the car, so I thought maybe it was a branch or something. And I uh, got closer and then I, well, I had the brakes on because I thought something was over the road, but, and then I slammed on the brakes and the car just like slid into the hole and then hit the other side and then it just like fell down. Lang had only had the car for about a month. Luckily, he crawled out the back windows unharmed and called for help. Uh, it kind of sucks because I don't have a car anymore. Woke up at about three this morning to thunder and lightning. Kind of looked outside, didn't really see anything. Um, pouring rain. Um, then, my husband's alarm went off at 6. Uh, he come in at about 6.05 and said, we're flooded. She wasn't kidding. Again in the afternoon, more rain as the back end of the storm rolled in and started downpouring on the town once again. After the last round of rain rolled through, Sulphur didn't even recognize her own backyard. I've never seen it get like this. Um, it gets bad behind her house but never to this extent. I have never seen this before. A local report has indicated the city of Obasso has received 11 inches of rain in just under 12 hours. If you look behind me here, people's backyards can be confused with a lake, leaving people with overflowing plumbing and flooded basements. We have a foot in our basement. Um, it's the pump that we have going. It's putting out what is going back in. It's just not keeping up. Um, but there, I mean, it is worse throughout town. Um, my husband's grandparents, they have at least um, three feet, if not four feet. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. All of the storms that were taking place in Minnesota, ongoing, they have all of the signatures of man's hand. The use of frequencies, they can create these floods. The storms, all of them, nearby North Dakota, up in Canada, all of it manipulated, all of the defined lines, defined circles, the jagged edges, all of it indications of frequencies being used 
to control, to manipulate, to keep in place these storms so people get flooded out, so they move out of those areas right into a mega region. They want to move everybody into mega regions. There will be 11 mega regions in the United States, but mega regions, they're creating them all over the world. India, China, the European Union, the rise of city networks and mega regions. So a lot of the flooding that has been happening in Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota, they want people to move out of these areas into the Great Lakes or any other mega region. All of the gray and even these light colored, the light green and gold and they want people out of those areas. It is easier to control a smaller population that is contained within a region than it is to control all the 324 million, which I don't believe we have anymore. I think our population has already uh, decreased quite a bit, considering that we have a fertility crisis and an awful lot of people dying from whatever disease that has been induced through vaccines, through the air that they're breathing, the chemicals, the heavy metals that they are breathing, uh, the food, the GMO foods. So flooding areas over and over and over again, it's a great way to get people beaten down, financially destitute, and they have to move. They can impoverish areas impoverished local economies that are in the gray area and what is provided for them in the regions corporations corporations corporate jobs so great lakes trump applauds himself for bringing foxconn into wisconsin and where is that factory being built racine right here in the great lakes region Foxconn just announced that they're going to be opening their corporate headquarters in Green Bay, which is within the mega region. Here's another map, mega regions of the United States. All of the yellow area will be inhabitable to human beings, and everybody will be contained within these mega regions. No, you won't be able to drive cars. No, you won't be able to travel outside of your mega region you will be using public transportation or a bicycle because you know cars well they contribute to global warming so you want to continue believing the global warming lie go right ahead but these lies are killing an awful lot of people and they will eventually come to your door this was posted just a couple of days ago railroad map of the united states today our maps america 2050 fresh projects the American Sustainable Smart City and Clean Energy Initiative 2050. Guess what? 2050 is not too far away. What, 32 years? 31 and a half years? In 31 and a half years, we are going to be seeing with such severity and frequency extreme weather events because they do they do want to get to their their target date and look at all of these areas that need to be depopulated smart sustainable cities where everybody will be contained within one region and 24 7 you will be watched every aspect of your life will be controlled how much energy are you using ration that water ration that energy ration the air conditioning you can't use cars, global warming, get on your bike. FEMA buyout programs for communities plagued by repeated flooding. Property acquisition may be the answer. FEMA buys out flooded properties.
And do you think that they do anything with those properties? No. No. They leave them vacant because they want people out of this area. No human habitation in the gray zones. So the, the question that I do get often is, why Houston? Why, why the Gulf Coast area? Why are they continually hitting these areas? Because they want people destroyed, which thins out the population, and they want funding to bring in the smart cities. And they want everybody to upgrade those properties. Don't you see? Global warming is bringing in flooding with a frequency that you've got to upgrade. You've got to elevate your homes. And boy, if you can't afford it, you won't get any flood insurance. And you'll be flooded again. And then you'll lose the property. Coastal property owners, FEMA may not bail you out. June 29, 2018. FEMA may not bail you out. The fires, the flooding, the hurricanes. FEMA is struggling. And these losses, yeah, combined with a year of brutal wildfires in California, volcanic activity in Hawaii, all of which man has induced, it has left FEMA at the point of breaking. The agency issued a warning to Florida leaders last month telling them not to count on FEMA for timely assistance if a disaster should wipe out basic commodities in that district, in your district. Individual property owners are taking this warning to heart. Whether or not they are is unclear. Only 19% of properties in Florida were covered by the National Flood Insurance Program in 2017. Uh, Georgia, 2%, and North Carolina and South Carolina, 3% and 9% respectively. So, the average national flood insurance program flood claim in 2016 was 62,247, and FEMA their direct payout is only 33000 The average payout is closer to 10000 Now, what FEMA wants you to do is to go to the Small Business Administration and get a loan. Get a loan, even if you have flood insurance. Coastal property owners can expect up to 14 named storms this year, including six hurricanes, You'd be wise to buy flood insurance now, before the season's first critical storms hit land. And if you don't have flood insurance, you buy flood insurance, I'm sure they have a time period that they don't cover, like probably six months, that you have to pay out premiums before they actually cover you. So, six months, land you in to December. You might be covered for floods in 2019.